So, welcome viewers uh, to the ISTEM Cares uh, ISTEM Professionals Chat. Uh, the purpose of this podcast is to bring career stories from ISTEM professionals. ISTEM means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, who undertook non-traditional career paths uh, in their life. And we hope that uh, these career journey roadmap discussions with professionals from STEM community will be helpful for you, especially students and early career professionals to craft uh, your own career journey in future. So today, myself, Pawan, and along with my colleague, uh, Smrita, and we have a very special guest today, uh, Moines Borana. Uh, Moniz is a communications specialist at Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. Uh, previous to this, he has earned his master's in bio nanotechnology from University of Edinburgh, and he was also he has also studied science policy at the University of Sussex. Today, he's joining us to share his career journey from from choosing uh, STEM field to becoming a communication specialist at Office of Principal Scientific Advisor and Government of India, and all other exciting up and downs and ventures he's passionate about uh, in in his life. So thank you, uh, Muniz, for joining us today to share your career journey with us in our virtual studio. Uh, Thank you, Pavan and Smita, to have me on your platform. Uh, It really feels nice to get connected uh, with uh, enthusiastic science communicators like you who are working to bring this you know, uh, unorthodox journey in, in the STEM arena to the people to inspire the next generation. Uh, kudos to your team and thank you uh, for hosting me today. It would be really uh, kind of helpful. So we would want you around, maybe you can take 10 minutes time and just walk us through uh, your career journey from, from beginning of your education how, and how did you crafted the whole kind of or went through, I would say, through this journey uh, uh, to this to where you are now. Uh, so my journey uh, uh, starting from uh, from my bachelor's to where I am uh, currently uh, doing science communication uh, at the Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India uh, is kind of uh, you know a free flowing journey, if I can uh, say so. Uh, so, like any science uh, enthusiast in the country, I have opted for you know uh, a combination of maths and biology in the plus two. Uh, got selected for uh, you know government uh, uh, seat for engineering and medical, but uh, I always was driven uh, towards you know uh, towards research, being a curiosity driven person. So I rather opted for a for a degree course uh, in science which was not the usual choice if you are if you know uh, uh, from an indian perspective uh, uh, engineering and doctor uh, uh, and doctor uh, field are the first choice careers that uh, uh, people opt for uh, and it was a rather unusual choice uh, especially uh, in the context when i joined uh, in 2009 the icer the concept of icer uh, by MHRD, uh, NICER and Center for Excellence in Basic Sciences by Department of Atomic Energies are the are, are at the very nascent stage when I opted for it. So, but it was I think a risk risk worth taking. So uh, after my plus two, I got admitted into uh, Center for Excellence in Basic Sciences, which is a Department of Atomic Energy, a uh, Government of India institution uh, uh, situated at uh, Kalina campus of University of Mumbai. Uh, I, as the name suggests, it's it's a research institute uh, catering to the basic sciences of physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. I I opted for chemistry and was uh, lucky enough to be taught by renowned faculties from IIT Bombay, uh, the TIFR Mumbai, uh, BARC Baba Atomic Research Center Mumbai. Um, ICT Mumbai and you know other institutions which are there in the proximity uh, of Bombay. That training kind of uh, pushed the limit uh, uh, when you know when you thinking out of the box. And as people say that uh, 
science always you have to like you have to carve out uh, something which is not been carved out before like you have to go to the territories which have not been explored before so uh, that training kind of trained me that, that five year integrated master course at the center for excellence in basic sciences uh, to pursue a further research degree abroad i went to university of uh, edinburgh to you know to do a research degree in uh, in nanobiotechnology uh, 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 in uh, uh, in dna nano machines which was an european uh, research council project uh, due to brexit and due to some circumstances uh, i you know i opted with for a masters degree and then i went on to pursue a science policy uh, science and technology policy degree at uh, SPRU that is uh, uh, the science policy research unit at uh, University of Sussex which is UK's leading science and technology think tank uh, so that kind of shaped my my career from a basic uh, science researcher to a science uh, and technology policy uh, policy uh, person and when i returned back to uh, india after doing these two courses in the uk uh, i was fortunate enough to get this opportunity uh, at the office of principal scientific advisor to to you know to take that science communication in the country to the masters and uh, i'm fortunate to be here the life uh, as i was discussing uh, 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 with uh, smita before when we were, i was invited uh, it's it's a journey that i'm learning uh, each passing day and i would be happy to talk about in detail uh, in the Thank you Mohanish for sharing with us in a nutshell about your journey till now. I just want to go back to something really at the beginning of what you've said. How what kind of projects or how did your time at uh, the Center for Excellence in Basic Sciences shape your scientific acumen and what would you um, tell the young generation who are contemplating to get into science after their grade 12 oh that's a very interesting question actually uh, so i will divide that question into into different segments so first of all how did i uh, got selected uh, for this uh, special uh, course uh, at this nations institute so there is this uh, national entrance screening test nest uh, uh, through which you get selected to center for excellence in basic science in mumbai as well as there is another department of atomic energy institution at bhubneshwar nice uh, so you appear for this exams which is an all all india level exam conducted uh, uh, for admission into these two colleges by department of atomic energy and uh, uh, you know the, the the cohort is small so uh, when you got selected to the, this uh, universities as i mentioned you got you got trained by eminent scientists uh, in the proxim in the institution which are in the proximity uh, as well as because of a, a small cohort you get a very personalized attention uh, which shape you as a scientist to think out of the box the courses are designed on a very international level uh, you know curriculum uh, the thing and the best part about this course is that it's an integrated master so uh, unlike other bachelor's and master's course you get to be trained in that in that field for five continuous year doing you know research projects during your undergrad so that kind of shape you uh, shape your thinking on how to frame a research question how to go about addressing that problem and which and, and then as the case often uh, comes up we do land up into uh, into you know into into problems when you are doing a research so how how to frame a plan b to you know to to address the same research question but through different tools or techniques and those kind of things so i think that kind of shaped the scientist uh, uh, in me uh, that how to think you know out of the box and how to use the resources that are there at your disposal so when i joined uh, uh, cgs it was a very new institution uh, we don't have you know fancy instruments yet because as the protocol is uh, they got all the clearance and it takes you know those kind of things so when we started our project we had very limited resources in place but but our my guide uh, dr bashir ahmed he ensured that those things 
do not become a obstacle so we kind of use a pooled resources from uh, you know proximity uh, institutions like tfr and brc uh, which are also the uh, department of atomic energy institutions uh, so i did a you know a reading project in my seventh semester uh, and by that time i was so equipped to to you know to to frame the question that i took that that reading project uh, in my eighth semester i at uh which resulted into a publication uh so even before finishing my masters i had a publication so i know that how to you know not just address a problem but how to articulate the output out of a research so that was the training that i got and then uh, uh, entire ninth semester was devoted on conducting a master dissertation so you get 9 month uh, uh like starting if you, if you are uh, using your summer vacation as well so you get a 9 month period uh, or at least a 6 month period to conduct dissertation and no other course is, is going to take uh, you know your attention so you get a, a proper you know uh, if i say a crash course for a phd uh, when you are de- doing there and Uh, and the research art output again is is you know judged by a proper uh, you know external committee commit uh, uh, comprising of you know eminent scientists across the country i was uh, my external was uh, a former dean at uh, iit bombay and to get you know praising remarks from such eminent scientists kind of boost your confidence to take the you know research uh, as a career further so that was kind of a zest of my training at uh, center for excellence in basic sciences and to all the audience listening uh, to this uh, to this uh, you know uh, seminar uh, what i want to do is if you are curious enough you know take science as a career and an icers you know by mhrd the ministry of uh, uh, human resources previously and now ministry of education so uh, indian institute of science education and research situated at uh, you know different parts of the country nicer at bhubaneswar and center for excellence in basic science so these are top notch institutions uh, which uh, which will train you to become a great scientist so do uh, apply for uh, this uh, institutions and even if you don't get into those institutions don't get disheartened uh, there are always different opportunities to get involved into such integrated masters course at iits at nits you know different central universities so uh, uh, that is the i think this is that uh, that sum up my experience uh, at uh, at a research institute set up by government of india and uh, the training that i got uh, fortunately i got from, uh, from the best of the best in the country yeah thank you thank you moinis for sharing this valuable information and it's definitely the first um the seed sown in the beginning of career actually drives the next journey um so you're in the your next step uh, you said you you went abroad to pursue your masters uh and then you got into uh science policy uh, research uh unit at university of sussex so uh we were would be interested to know that uh how did you undertook that transition um and 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 what was the mindset to went to go into science policy uh area uh well so uh maybe uh serendipity because brexit happened and my funding uh was from european research council so there was a lot of uncertainty and uh maybe you know uh i always wanted to be into that field because when i was in in the uk when i joined uh, university of edinburgh to pursue a research degree uh in bio nanotechnology uh i also volunteered for uh, national indian students and alumni union which is the oldest and the largest student body uh in the uk and only one of its kind uh, catering to indian students abroad so i was fortunate to get uh, you know selected and you know volunteer for the, such a premier uh, uh, student body uh, as well or uh, uh, and when i was doing that thing i, I you know uh, because of my interest into into the policy aspect of uh, of governance or or of science or technology innovation uh, and higher higher education 
so because of that interest you know i got uh, i got opportunities to interact with uh, you know scottish uh, minister for europe and uh, uh, you know uh, for his johnson uh, office who, who was uh, a mayor of london at that time and other eminent people uh, in london government and uh, uh, westminster government and indian government so that kind of shaped that uh, you know that i could be uh, a good policy maker or maybe i can i can take a route uh, into policy so when brexit happened and there was uncertainty about you know funding and all those kind of things and i dropped out from uh, from uh, university of uh, edinburgh with a masters uh, there was a single choice that i i had to make that i had to make a career in science policy and screw uh, was the right choice for me i was fortunate enough to get the masters uh, chancellor scholarship uh, uh, at uh, screw to pursue that degree so yeah that's how the transition happened so maybe that volunteering experience uh, at uh, uh, nisau that's national indian students and alumni union uh, shaped uh, that transition uh, maybe my interaction with uh, you know the top not bureaucrats and and the minister level uh, politicians uh, at various strata of uh, indian and the uk governments kind of uh, you know boosted my confidence if i can say so if at cbs my my confidence was boosted in terms of a, uh, a research uh maybe the uk gave me a paid uh policy maker in tell me uh, a part that of call out a credit to that uh, in india uh, when we were passed out uh, uh, science policy career was not talked about much you know mm-hmm. so uh, uh, that was something that uh, i could only came to know about uh, uh, when i was in uk now dsc uh, the department of science and technology has established centers for uh, you know science policy at iisc bangalore at iit delhi and other uh, areas so now it's, it it has become kind of a, you know uh, a, a well sought after career even in india but at, at the time when i opted, opted for uh, maybe not that much of knowledge was uh, was there so it was majorly because of uh, the kind of work i was doing or the the advocacy i was doing in the uh, uk india higher education space that prompted me to take a science policy route so uh once you once you studied your um science policy at the university of sussex uh, did you have to ever do any kind of projects like the way we do masters here and how different are masters let's say in the uk to the ones that we do here well uh, so masters is a one year program mostly in the uk uh, there are obviously two years for masters as well uh, but uh, they come with a you know a, a option of placement so there are two kind of uh, masters in the uk a one year masters straight away you are taught and then you do, go go for a dissertation and the second day is a one year taught course dissertation and a placement so i went for a one year master uh, so unlike us like there would be uh, so usually in india like there, is a, there are semesters and the final uh, semester you get for your dissertation uh, there are three semesters uh, the first is you know there are basic courses like if i'm talking about from a science policy perspective then it it screw uh, because the the cohort was so diverse there are there are people from politics there were people from philosophy there were people from you know basic uh, uh, biology and biochemistry background uh, there were people uh, who have done their civil services uh, uh, in pakistan and in india and those kind of people so uh, it's it's a very diverse uh, group uh, there are people who from india from african countries from south american countries so the first semester was devoted just to bring everybody on on one one platform with courses in philosophy governance ethics and what not right so those kind of things were there in the first semester then in the second semester you go for your specialization so if suppose someone wants to specialize in energy policy so out of all the courses they might opt for like there are a few compulsory courses and then you have a choice of uh, uh, uh optional courses uh, which you can take accordingly so that's how the se- second semester is and in the, during the second semester st- itself you have to choose a supervisor you have to contact the supervisor uh, you know propose uh, a dissertation that you want to take it 
and you know as soon as your second semester end we you utilize your you know summer kind of tenure that's there from uh, from june to you know august period uh, to do that dissertation uh, and if everything goes well you kind of pass out with the degree now and but so that's how the uk uh, masters is there in which i have also defined how the spru masters wa- was there i took a uh, uh, dissertation in uh, health policy uh, sector uh, uh, so under ben martin professor ben martin uh, so yeah that is that was my experience and and when i went to spru i had no particular choice that okay this is the area where i want to you know go in policy because i want I, i went with a very open mind so when i opted for courses they were in science policy in uh, energy policy you know health policy and those kind of things because even mega science project uh, you know i took a course in that so uh, just to get a flavor of you know all the things and then subsequently use the dissertation to maybe specialize or maybe you know apply the tools uh, rather than you know specifically make a career into that so i just uh, applied those tools during my dissertation and uh, that's how again from poly science policy to science communication transition became easy because i was having a open minded uh, approach uh, even during the master yeah that's i i must say that you know been you have been a uh, avid learner at every step because kind of getting uh, into a new environment and learning new things and then excelling at to you know to the level that people appreciate it is is a unique of course the thing is you have to be a learner throughout your life you want to if you are in a, uh, any career related to stem right or maybe i don't know uh, education sector so you have to be a learner uh, you have to have this open mindedness uh, uh, to make uh, you know uh, proper or optimal utilization of your uh, of your talent of of your opportunities yeah so that brings the next next question about your uh, the last career transition to become a communication specialist at office of principal scientific advisor so uh, i think you, you listener would be interested to know about that uh, what were the key skills which uh, you acquired during all these uh, different uh, uh, mi- mi- migration to different sectors different uh places and and how did you plan uh, to transition to such a role uh well i think all the credit goes to my training at center for excellence in basic sciences and and the supervision i got from uh, from my supervisor dr uh, bashir ahmed who is currently at uh, jamia ahmed university uh it's because i have been given this this training that okay uh, at every step you have to learn uh you have to be an open minded uh, uh uh approach you have to take uh, an open minded approach and uh you know what what whatever comes into your way you have to make that as an opportunity uh and a key aspect that that uh, i think i learned uh, from a cvs days was to network with people was to never shy away uh, from asking questions i have you know uh over the over the dining table i have asked uh, professor uh, uh, venki uh, the the indian origin uh, nobel laureate in chemistry about how to draft an email uh, to professor at uh, at uh, you know at european institution so could you believe that like at a dinner table you are asking a nobel laureate how to draft an email but i did and it helped me because the the key point that he suggested uh when i incorporated those things uh, i you know the 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 chances of me getting a reply uh, from a professor abroad increased drastically so i was uh, always a kind of a, a curiosity driven person uh, kept an open mindedness uh, was never shy uh, on whenever any you know new challenges came up uh, uh, whenever i was transitioning so i was i did the transition from a basic science uh, researcher from cbs to a applied research as at edinburgh uh, then as as i mentioned the brexit hit i made a transition from a researcher to a policy person and from a policy person i trans 
you know made a transition to communication and it's not that these are you know abrupt events when i was doing my research uh, i was reading about or i was volunteering into policy area when i was studying science policy at school you know i was communicating uh, you know science participating into you know b school programs which are there to you know for for the techno uh, technology enthusiast or those kind of things so so at each level i was doing the other work as well so that made my transition smooth it was not an abrupt event uh, like and suddenly a transition came i was doing those things mean that learning and making my you know what are the best practices and those things and then then i went uh, to to do a transition so that kind of had i'm sure the listeners would be very curious about one day in your life at the office and if you may like to share it with the listeners yeah so uh, uh thanks samita for that question uh, i would be very glad to share uh, my uh, day at the office of uh, principal scientific advisor office so uh, this uh, office of uh, principal scientific Ad- advisor to the government of india was established at the time of uh, dr abdul kalam our honorable former uh president of the of india so he was the first uh, psa uh, followed by uh, you know uh, dr r chidambaram uh, so professor uh, so dr r chidambaram and dr uh, abdul kalam were kind of the spearhead of pokhran uh, test if you know so after uh, dr r chidambaram it is professor k vijay raghavan uh, who took over uh, as principal scientific advisor uh, so a specific role of science communicator in the office of psa was only created uh, last year so we are me and my colleague uh, got the first recruits uh, to be doing science communication uh, it is the vision of uh, professor k vijay raghavan the current uh, principal scientific advisor is to take you know science technology innovation to the masses so uh, that's where uh, you know uh, our role comes up and as you can envisage the kind of work that the office of psa is doing they are stirring you know high ticket events like deep ocean mission uh, you know biodiversity mission quantum frontier mission uh, artificial intelligence mission you know agni and those kind of things uh, there are projects like i stand which is india uh, you know project of having india's project on pooling resources uh, across the country uh, for the researchers uh then there are projects like uh, you know uh manas which is on the mental well being uh that is started by office of psa uh, in, uh, in collaboration with ministry of health uh then there are uh, you know industry engagement uh, uh partners in which the office of psa has facilitated various projects across the country especially in the time of covid uh, uh by you know doing partnerships uh with the, with the state actors and the industry industry uh and the foundation partners there are uh, you know there's a, uh, a a project on science and technology clusters uh, uh which are uh, situated at bangalore pune hyderabad bhubaneswar jodhpur and delhi so these are the kind of project that the office is doing uh taking science ecosystem in the country you know to a to a very next level so uh my role as a science communicator here in the office is to you know take you know to 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 talk about those uh, uh, initiatives in a language that general people can understand you know uh, uh to to devise a communication strategy uh, for the office so that you know uh, we engage routinely with the uh, industry partners uh you know those kind of things so this is the kind of work that uh, that uh, is there in the job description uh, talking about day to day activities we're interacting with uh, scientists who are who the office of psa uh, has funded so kind of learning from their research their output you know we are uh, we interact on a daily basis with the different ministries uh, with whom the various missions uh, the office is studying you know uh, then uh, the, the Uh, the principal scientific advisor is also the chairperson of uh, prime minister's science technology innovation and uh, innovation and innovation advisory council the team stack uh, as well as emerging tech uh, uh, in power in power uh, technology group etg 
so we kind of you know the kind of get to interact with 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 the best of the minds here in the country uh, as well as abroad on on this on on various aspects of development taking place in the sta ecosystem in the country uh, i also handle the social media uh, which is kind of you know have become uh, a tool to reach out to to people uh, nowadays so that is my general uh, day work that uh, i could explain and um you just mentioned professor venki so he's a nobel laureate and you've been in the official indian team at the um nobel laureates meeting and i was wondering if you'd like to share a how did you manage to get into such a prestigious meeting and what has been your takeaway for the listeners so fortunately uh, i had been to two of uh, such meetings uh, uh, where nobel laureates uh, uh, were but you know uh, but there uh, and in both time i was uh, i went there as a part of team india uh, as a fellow of the department of science and technology so the first was uh, during my second year itself uh, when i went to asian uh, science camp uh, in south korea so that selection was based on you know my uh, project that i was undertaking at homi baba center for science education uh, in a us fellowship i was doing uh, there so based upon you know uh, so selection criteria that were there that i got selected uh, uh for that prestigious camp uh so the criteria was that the student has to be an undergrad not you know who has got the training but who has the potential to be a you know a, a young researcher in the future so because of my experience at homi baba center for science education which is again at uh, at the fn institute i was doing the nius fellowship which is national uh, initiative for undergrad uh, undergraduate science uh, again a prestigious fellowship uh, specially uh, directed towards undergrad students uh, in the in the country so because of that i got uh, you know selected for the asian science camp as a fellow of the department of science and technology then in my fourth year uh, or towards the end of my fourth year because i already got my publication uh, you know there was another in the pipeline and i got a fair bit of research experience you know international uh, uh, internships were there on my cv so uh, i got selected uh, in a very competitive you know pool uh, of uh, researchers in medicine and physiology uh, for the 2014 uh, linda meeting of nobel laureates again as a fellow of department of science and technology so i must thank uh, that throughout my journey a uh, department of science and technology has played a very key role uh, when i was at center for excellence in basic science i got awarded with this inspire scholarship funded by dst uh, both my uh, uh, selection to uh, indian team for uh, you know linda meet and the asian science camp uh, were funded by department of science and technology uh, so yeah so i think uh, the the selection to asian science camp was based on my potential and the selection to linda meeting was based on you know to 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 come out uh, not just as a, as a potential candidate but something that okay you have i have transformed that potential into you know whatever opportunities i got uh, into a good uh, good cv if i can say so yeah so that was i think i was i was fortunate and again it is all the blessing of uh, the the faculties uh, at cb uh, at center for excellence in basic sciences tsr drc uh, iit bombay who taught us uh, and you know kind of shaped the scientific journey that i took so right from the start um, in, 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 uh, in fact i should especially congr- uh, uh, you know uh, pay my gratitude to homi uh, baba center for science education for giving me that nius opportunity at the very start of my career so that's how i got selected uh, by you know uh, being uh, a good research uh, student uh, in the college mm you know yeah, I, i had to sacrifice a lot of uh, people used to uh, say uh, that when as a student life they, they used to ask that what is what is your daily thing and i said okay after classes i i go to my lab and i work till late night and then i come back and then attend classes in the morning it was a hard journey it just uh, you know you have to sacrifice a lot to achieve something but uh, there is no pleasure more than representing your country uh, at a international forum uh, so yeah 
Yeah, uh, you know. And having to play twice in a in a in a span of five years, it is it is amazing. It's something I will uh, uh, I will never forget, and I will always be grateful uh, to the Indian government, uh, especially the Department of Science and Technology. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I must say that having a right mentor at the right time um, is is actually it takes a long uh, way uh, in the career. and i'm really happy i agree that, so yeah. the role the role that dr bashir ahmed uh, my first supervisor at center for excellence uh, in basic sciences uh, and he is currently in jamia ahmedabad university uh, as a ug uh, ugc faculty so he played a key role like you know as a father figure so he used to guide and i, and I used to as i mentioned i am a very curiosity driven person so i used to ask a lot of questions is not just i will assign a task i will go to lab and i will do and i will say okay so it should be done no i will go i will do the thing and i will ask him so when i said that i used to work late in the night he used to keep me there uh, you know ask and answering my question yeah you know uh, and i i you know and he is still available on phone like even now if i had any any doubt i can reach out so a role of supervisor is, is key at edinburgh uh, i was fortunate to work in the cockroach group again the faculty that the supervisor was so approachable that like you can go bar, and, you know go into his office and say scott i have this thing to you know to to discuss i, I am a person who would have like 10 ideas i just put all the ideas into you know into on the table and i said this is how we can do this is how we can. and he would just you know scrap the ideas they could don't no, this won't work this should work and this will take a lot of your time i don't want your time to be wasted on this one this is our end goal so he will stir my my thing so by the time i, I decided to drop out a research you know project in between uh, because of as i mentioned the uh, brexit and some person uh, circumstances i still got a distinction because my st- my research was going into a right direction because of my supervisor i'm really thankful to uh, uh, dr scott cockroach for for that and his student like his research students even now you know they are getting awarded at the royal society uh, conferences or you know best oral oral po- uh, award or best poster uh, presentation it's because of the role of the supervisors i totally agree with you that it's the supervisor that that shapes you uh, into whatever you are you should always be grateful to them yeah you know that's as uh, as uh, true for every even from history back to history we there are people like good teachers uh, in the stories who made like arjuna we had dronacharya kind of trained in a best uh, best person right so but i also at the same time the person who is taking the it's advice it's good that you mentioned dronacharya i will i will uh, take a, a given example from my life uh, especially like since you mentioned dronacharya so we all know that like dronacharya like the story of arjun uh, when dronacharya was training them into uh, into archery so he said that focus on the eye of the fish yeah right? so during my time at edinburgh this is a very key advice to the listeners out there uh, you know i used to as i mentioned i used to go to my supervisor with 10 different ideas that we can do that we can do that and he used to answer me that okay, i am aiming for a publication of of you know uh, a rank of science or nature will these ideas take you there or not that's a simple way of you know selecting the project like selecting the next step if that idea is going to take my father uh, you know project to uh, publication worthy of nature science cell then it's it you going to take it further if not then just scrap it right there <laughs> that is kind of like i, I was i was mind blown when i got to edit that because it it kind of changed like i was an ambitious person before but it took me a next level like i won't settle for anything which is not up to my mark yeah yeah that's that true that approach i think took me to office of psa because i was doing science communication as a freelancer for a year i didn't op- i got an op- you know opportunities elsewhere but i said no i i won't be settling uh, at a level which is not at par uh, with where i want to be uh, and those kind of thing even it, like so those kind of things i think uh, you only get to learn from a, a, a guru a teacher like dronacharya and for my case 
i was fortunate to get to uh, in shape in, uh, in, in you know in, in shape of dr bashir ahmed and dr scott cockrock yeah that's true you know um so if we go further there uh, you have been doing lot of volunteering work uh, with different organization and some of your own like we um if i name few of which you've been doing vision india foundation youth for change at chittorgarh i think that's your hometown and umid samiti so how do you balance and you know uh, and i manage the time working with different organization it's not easy must say <laughs> uh, could you please share some tips and advice for people who want to do volunteering and why it is useful first i will answer why it is useful and then i will talk about the time management part so why it is useful uh, it's a simple thing that you know uh, for for personal development it is important that you know you do things which which push your boundaries uh and when you are doing voluntary work uh, apart from your you know regular assigned work uh, it pushes you to do a lot more firstly secondly as i mentioned that uh, uh, you know uh, because i got funded uh, by you know, government in in that throughout my my life uh, and because of the values i got uh, uh, at home uh, when i was you know uh, when i when my mind was shaping up uh, uh, its thought process and all i believe that as a human you have a bigger goal you have a bigger you know part to 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 contribute to the society at large so it's my belief that you know seva is dharma so you have to do uh, in whatever capacity you can do uh, association with all those uh, you know uh, ngos or charity that you uh, that you mentioned uh, starting from uh, umeed samiti which i did uh, during my you know school days at chitwad uh, then i uh, you know got uh, with the uh, vision india foundation uh, in their policy boot camps and those kind of things i went to uk i was i have been associated with uh, indian national indian uh, indian uh, national indian students and alumni in new south since 2015 uh, even after returning back to india i am uh, you know i am currently the president of that uh, that charity in the uk uh, and devoting time for the events and you know building that uh, network of uh, you know concerned stakeholders and those those kind of things uh and with the uh, with the youth for uh, change in chitwadgarh i had a you know i had a, a, a seminar series during the pre covid time obviously uh, uh with various schools uh, in the local area where i talk, where i talked about you know social responsibility that a that a young person can take especially you know a student from 8 to 12 so those kind of things i did and as i mentioned why it is important because you have you have got your you know birth as a human so you have to contribute back to the society uh, it pushes you to the boundary so kind of a you know personality development so that's the answer to your second part now coming to your first part that is how i manage my time uh, i know it's a difficult task uh, when you see from outside but then uh, what i usually do uh, is i divide my you know daily or the weekly thing uh, accordingly so i know that i have to give to you know two hours or four hours a day uh, uh, four hours a week uh, to say uh, miss out work then i will try to devote it maybe during the entire week or maybe specifically uh, saturday or sunday i will try to finish, finish it off uh, when there are events uh, especially you know high ticket events like we are hosting a uh, lot current uh, billy moria and uk home office uh, on third so these are very big events and you know there's a lot of thing that goes in the background so obviously then you have to devote extra time and it takes you know the toll uh, uh, elsewhere but these are very few instances where you you, you are get too much of occupied otherwise it's just like you know the responsibility like with uh, 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 uh with me saw i know that my responsibilities are a b c and this will require this much of time uh, over the entire week and i will divide accordingly um uh, and as i mentioned i started volunteering since my school days uh, which is quite a normal nowadays uh, but uh, so i kind of you know this has become kind of a habit when i was in, uh, in cbs also 
uh, there were less of an opportunity because I was too indulged into research. So we started, you know, uh, different clubs and you used to do different activities, uh, which I would count as, you know, maybe they were extracurricular, maybe they were voluntary, they were successful to those, but I used to take time out of my studies and research, even at CBS. When I went to UK, you know, I, uh, you know, I was one of the very few researchers who have opted for uh, a voluntary work, uh, which is not in the field of science. So, yeah, that is also one key aspect that I want to mention that doing voluntary work uh, matters. It doesn't matter that whether you do it into your own domain or you do it into you know, different domain. But different domain will will make you, uh, you know, uh, put you in touch with people who are, you know, have different perspective and, you know, different learning curve and different knowledge uh, domain. So you learn a lot about, uh, you know, from different, like there are people from investment uh, sector, there are people from communication uh, sector, so you learn. And maybe those learning, like from the communication per- person, uh, that means how I, I, you know, I learned something from the person and then I was and, uh, using those uh, learnings here in, uh, in my work. So that's how, uh, uh, how the voluntary uh, is important and that's how you can manage your work, uh, uh, you know, manage your time accordingly. And when it gets too taxing, you won't be able to do that. Just contact the, uh, the your you know designated person at the uh, at the charity or the, uh, at the institute that you are volunteering for, and say that it is going overwhelming. Uh, I need a break for some time, or maybe I won't be able to continue this much time for this long period. So communication is the key. And uh, Mohanish, uh, what advice would you like to give to the listeners who are keen in making a transition to science communications? Oh, that's a very good question. I was hoping that you asked this question. Um, uh, so, science communication is one has to understand that science communication cannot be done in silos. It's a community work. So network with people, you know, network with scientists, uh, network with, you know, uh, researchers, network with, you know, students uh, at different part of the, you know, uh, country or across the globe that, like, you guys are doing. So networking is the key. You have to reach out to people uh, and think, you know, very creative. This is a very evolving sector. So if you can think out of the box, think creatively to, you know, you know, to because researchers have published their work in uh, into into a journal, it is it is a research output already. So, how you can use your creativity to you know to decipher the same information uh, to different audiences that requires you know out of the box thinking. So, you know, just use creativity uh, 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 to large. Keep upscaling yourself. You know, since I started uh, science communication, like I have, on a daily basis, I'm getting to know uh, some or other, you know, platform or a software that I can use, um, some tools that I can use, or maybe the more model that uh, that can be, you know, uh, can be used to communicate science for the. Uh, there are obviously uh, take leverages of all the webinars or the writing session or you know. Wherever you think that you need to upscale yourself, do upscaling. So these are the key aspects. And yeah, yeah, will be. Uh, uh, so if be aware of the current, you know, uh, updates uh, in science, technology, and innovation domain. That's the key. Uh, it's you are gonna be uh, one of the role model because most of people. In at least in, I would say, in life sciences, if you per se you say, think that you need to have a big degree like PhD. And then when you speak or write something, people listen, but you are one of the road model who, despite not having a PhD degree, but uh, with your own way of going forward, had made a mark. And I think this this is going to help many people who are just doing their masters or, you know, um, and trying to get something um, Trying to avoid PSD, I would say, and they want to get into some uh, some kind of uh, non-traditional career option. Uh, but I think you're gonna yeah. your profile, your journey is one of the rare one where you took your own way to craft and move ahead and reach to the similar positions. Um, so that I wanted to hear your views that how was your experience about 
uh, about not having a PhD but trying to navigate the career. Yeah, uh, that's a very uh, you know thought provoking question. I would say uh, so. PhD is obviously is going to give you a credibility that okay, this person has achieved a doctorate, so he or she has you know a proper you know training. You know, it's this you know. Uh, a thought process has been developed, and a personality uh, development has, has taken place. Those kind of things do come with a PhD. But for science communication, uh, uh, in fact, you don't even need a science degree. If I may be very, you know, uh, loud uh, out here, uh, you don't need a science degree, or you don't need. Forget about PhD. You don't even need a science degree. What you need is to is to understand that what's happening. you know uh, and to communicate that thing to 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 the to the audience the targeted audience in a very simple lucid fashion okay so for me uh, it was a choice that to finish off the phd uh, and then you know make a career into uh, uh academia or maybe a science communicator or a science policy uh and i was very clear when i was doing the science policy work interacting with you know science communicator but i'm good in networking you know whatever presentation oral presentation i had given uh people still you know after many years when when your facebook memories show up and people say that oh i remember that lecture in which you did that correlation of your research with you know maybe a mars mission or something like that they still remember so that kind of fact had kind of promoted me that okay this can be a career that i can take uh, so and i was very clear that okay i know that the usual uh, orthodox path is to finish the phd and then go for a you know a, a communication or a policy uh, you know course or uh, a post doc or a you know, career but without that uh, also things can be done you know comedians are doing science science communication yeah that's true Yeah, no, it's so, about communication. So, yeah, it's about communication. It's totally about communication. <laughs> and you know, to understand science, it's not that difficult. You know, obviously yeah. with a PhD, the perspective and the deeper insight would be there. Uh, I'm not, di- uh, you know, discrediting those who have a PhD. They are obviously going to communicate science in a much insightful way. That's that's a given. Uh, they can be trained for that, but those who are not have that PhD degree, uh, they will also communicate in their own creative sense, their own creative way. So, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, to the audience, I just yeah. want to say that uh, your degree doesn't uh, define you. I think your creativity and your passion to you know network and to to reach out to people uh, does. Yeah, I know there are like new initiatives coming in uh, in some part of the world is about um, give away the degree, you know, programs. It's we let people come up with something pr- like creative, you know, the, the whole uh, the recruitment and other places like different positions. That some countries are trying to innovate out that how can we more human and then just uh, technical numbers or uh, some grading system, you know. So definitely, I think that's the future. Uh, as we, as everything is on social media, and there are a lot of platforms to express the creativity, which was not earlier there. Uh, we could not reach out to people, uh, to the masses, uh, without knowing some media channel or media <laughs> house, isn't it? Now everybody has you know, Instagram. I will, I will give you an example here again. Uh, so when we were a part of uh, Centre for Excellence in Basic Sciences. Uh, one of my co-supervisor was uh, Professor R. B. Hosur, uh, Kalam Shri uh, Professor R. B. Hosur. He was uh, the head at NMR facility at PIFR uh, Mumbai. So he was co-supervising me. And you know, uh, when he was taking our NMR course, he used to ask us to present. That whatever it would, mm-hmm. it would be us presenting, and then it would be followed by a discussion. So. science communication or any any communication you know when you start communicating the ideas you know when you learn yourself and then you teach to people uh, it becomes you know kind of a routine exercise so for me uh, phd was never an like an uh, obstacle because i was trained in a way that i can communicate science without a phd uh, awesome. 
so yeah just i want to do uh, uh, add that thing and i am very thankful uh, i i forgot to mention uh, professor ravi also because so he is also kind of a uh, you know backbone to the uh, the career i took because he as a director at center for excellence in basic science uh, the kind of facilities that he provided so we were only two students in, in chemistry at uh, center for excellence in basic science when, when it started and uh, our teachers our faculty used to come from uh, bhavai tank research center uh, you know tif and the iit bombay so to give us that kind of ecosystem uh, at college level uh, was you know unparalleled uh, probably in the history of uh, in science and you know that's that's how uh, maybe I'm, i got this opportunity of so please to, to give it back to the country uh, in whatever way possible so yeah. again, uh, through this uh, So this video, I want to thank uh, Professor uh, Padam Chief Officer Haji Hosur as well. Yeah, I'm sure you know uh, you you would have many more. I must say, you know, uh, to the, these people have been backbone in the country uh, to build uh, workforce, to build resources. Um, so, and thank you for giving your insight about about how did you you know. Uh, get into without having a PhD. I think a lot of people would get booster uh, dose uh, with that. So with that, we would uh, end our uh, conversation for today. Um, if the viewer wants to reach out to you, what would be the best way um, uh, to connect with you? I think LinkedIn would be the best way. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 there are other platforms like Twitter and uh, uh, Facebook as well. But uh, since uh, most of the people who are going to connect uh, will be professional and science communicators mm-hmm. so it will be good to get connected over linkedin and build up that community perfect i am i am i am looking forward to network with with uh, with your audience so feel free to reach out awesome so with that we will have last three rapid fire round questions that is just for fun nothing serious and you have to reply like instantly you don't have to think <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh the first one is that if you have to redesign your career, what do you love to do the most? Doing research in nanobiotech or communications? Uh it surely will be communication. All right. The second one uh about the food. So, you have three options. Um Chole Bhature, Michel Pau and Dal Bati Churma. Dal Bati Churma, I'm a Rajasthani fellow man. You shouldn't have asked this question. <laughs> I mean you've been in Mumbai so Mumbai people love really <laughs> Yeah so uh, yeah Misal Pav Misal Pav was life savior for me in Mumbai you know my breakfast oh, yeah. I used to skip uh, uh, my breakfast because of you know uh, I used to walk late in the night so and as soon as in the morning I classes at 9 so most of the time I do not get time to to breakfast so there is a good eatery uh, across uh, mumbai university so i used to go there to have misal pav which is you know <laughs> it is my savior but given a choice it's always dal bhat chuma awesome uh, so the last one is about the city it is mumbai or delhi uh, neither i would say it's edinburgh oh wow <laughs> awesome so thank you so much uh, for giving your time i know it's late there in your office and and sharing a lot of things with yeah i'm still in uh, office us. so yeah so those who are asking about uh, uh, or those who are wondering about my time at uh, at office of uh, psa so uh, it's not that i am so late usually but yeah the work is you know uh, it's not time bomb and uh, it's interesting it's fascinating uh, and it's something that uh, i love to do so i don't mind staying till late in the uh, in the night uh, to have those kind of conversations with thanks to me with like power and sweet idea so yeah that's something i want to say because you should not get frightened that i'm so late in the office uh, it's not the usual thing Mm, that's good. So thank you so much <clears throat> for giving your time and sharing your experiences. Uh, um, I made a lot of things, and I'm sure the viewers um, would get benefited um, with these conversations. Any science communicator or any person in science domain looking for any sort of advice, whether related to research, policy, or communication, feel free to reach out uh, to me. and uh, i'm a very easy uh, to approach person so don't feel shy and yeah 
uh, all the best to to team ice and care and thank you